YouTube, you hear what's going on? You hear what's going on? Yeah. Yeah. That's that's. Hey, I'm not the DJ today. So that's so his music. Don't even, don't even point fingers at me. Where's where's where, hey memo? <laughs> memo. What? The music that we just listened to is that your music or what? That's George's music. Let's take it to George. George! That is not my music. George! You could call me right now and the music's not gonna stop, so technically that's Call is him. Not my His music. number is 707. No. <laughs> 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 oh my god. Alright, listen, you guys, today in this video I did a high top. He didn't want anything in the front. All right, I just lined them up right here, but you guys will see it. it's a dope fade. And I did something to the fade to make it kind of blend a little better, and I'm going to show you how I did it. Stay tuned. you guys so before you start cutting what you want to do is pick the hair out I'm not gonna give it a thorough pick out I'm just basically fluffing it out so you know just kind of checking to see if any knots are in there so it won't get snagged when I'm using the clippers so next step is gonna be debulking okay I'm gonna use my two guard I'm um, using my Andis Cordless Masters and I'm going to go straight up basically knocking off all of this bulk on the sides. Uh, we know my client wants a high top so the best thing to do is just run the clippers straight up meanwhile clearing the bulk at the bottom. Not really focusing on shape alright don't focus on shape right now just make sure you don't dig in and just run that clipper kind of straight up and debulk. So now we're going to focus on shaping, alright, I got my Andis Cordless Masters with the lever fully closed, um, that's like using a balding clippers, if you have a balding clippers these will work as well. Right now I'm just going straight up, kind of building that shape of the high top, knowing that I'm not trying to get it as perfect as possible right now, because that, that will all come into detail later. Um, so I'm just kind of getting the shape down so visually I know what the outcome is going to look like. So right now I'm using the OG Oster Fast Feed basically to set in my bald line. Now keep in mind my fast feeds are zero gapped with the ceramic cutting blade and uh, what zero gap mean is basically when the cutting blade is closest to the you know the top blade so uh, keep that in mind. Right now I'm just setting my bald line um, showing you guys that you can do it this way too. Um, you just got to be kind of you know witty with the with the way you curve your 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 clippers so um, I always use liners because the liners is more easier to maneuver and make that 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 smooth transition design uh, bolt line that, that that I like to make so much also it is harder to take it out with the uh, liners than it is to just go in and you know kind of bald it this way but I am gonna clear it out and use my Babyliss FX skeletons and just kind of you know go underneath the the bald line that I set in with the Oster fast feeds. Mm -hmm. 
Next guideline is the lever open, going up about a half inch, keeping it consistent all the way around, making sure you go over the guideline multiple times so everything can be at that lever open length. Same thing with the one guard open. I'm going up about a half inch, making sure I don't, you know, go all the way up. Don't run your clipper all the way up. Just stay below the parietal ridge area and make sure that you just, you know, go over the guideline multiple times. The reason why you don't want to go above the parietal ridge is because you don't want to have that dip off in, you know, that, that area. You want it to kind of all just go seamlessly straight up okay you don't want this dent in and then go straight up kind of like the hair is just sitting on top of the hair you don't want that look you want it to look like it's all just flowing straight up Now putting on the two guard with the lever closed, right at the parietal ridge area, I'm basically scooping out, um, trying to get that area to look more smoother, not too bulky like it is. So it's basically a scoop out motion and then I'm gonna reshape it using the lever closed. So like I said, with the lever fully closed, I'm gonna reshape the high top. Um, basically just making it, this is just doing some detail work, right? Just making the high top more defined and more alongside of the head than off the head. So right here in this area, I see a lot of bulk that I need to get out. So with the one guard with the lever open in a flick out motion, I'm gonna flick out that area between the one and the two. Now putting on the zero guard with the lever closed in a flick out motion, flick out that middle line. Now keep in mind that if you need to, you know, go up anymore, adjust your lever as you go up. Don't stay with the zero guard closed the entire time. And most importantly, use your corners, all right? You don't have to use your the full blade on this whole thing. Notice how I'm not using the full blade because if I use the full blade during this process, I'm gonna take off um, more than I want in certain areas where I already you know worked on that area so remember to use your corners throughout this process So because we use the lever closed to set in our ball line, um, it's way easier to take out that, bo that bottom line. 
uh, with the lever closed and even you can even like adjust it a little bit more so it's not fully closed so um, yeah you can play with it it's a lot more easier to take out this is another way to do a, a perfect blend um, yeah I recommend doing it this way for beginners but for me I kind of like using the liners just because I could set in that harsh ball line and you know it, it's no problem with me taking out that bottom line because my clippers are zero gapped and you know I'm, I'm seasoned I kind of know what I'm doing at this point So this is the portion of the cut or I should say the blend where you know it separates you from you know your just average barber uh, is when you do detail work is how well you can find those areas where you see bulk and clear it out to where you can see a lot of gradiency in your blend all right the the the, the worst thing that you could do is leave lines in your blend and it just makes you look average all right to see a a, a a real gradient blend and just uh like man how did you get it to look like that type of look is everything so really spend time with doing detail work this should be the longest process of you know either putting in the guidelines or taking out the guidelines this here is the longest process you should take by detailing your work So right now I'm going to clean up the bottom half by using my Andis shavers, uh, making it razor bald at the bottom. You don't want to do this on um, a lot of your Afri African American clients, the one with coarse hair. Um, I usually use this on straighter hair clients and he, he has, um, you know, that straighter hair texture to where he won't bump up after, you know, using this. So you got to kind of judge it by your client's hair type you know to ask them you want to ask them first if they use the the shavers at the bottom because some of your clients you know they'll they'll get razor bumps so now it's time to work on the top my client told me he doesn't want too much cut off the top so right now i'm just going to shape it in the you know the length i'm going to take off some length that I feel is a proper length for this high top even though he doesn't want any cut off I still feel there's a lot of stragglies up there that needs to be trimmed down so I'm gonna use my discretion and you know how I go about uh, taking this hair down at the top So right now I'm brushing in this product that I got from Vic Blends. It's called Finishing Foam. Um, you guys can follow Vic Blends at Vic Blends um, on Instagram. Uh, but it's a great product. Um, really lays the hair down. Um, I usually do this with. Uh, he usually does it with waivers. Like he'll put it on. He'll put it on waivers and he'll put the do rag on, blow dry it, and uh, you know they'll their hair will be super laid at this point. So that's the kind of idea that I'm that I'm getting with this. I want the hair to lay down. So I'm gonna put this product on, brush everything down, and then blow dry it and brush as I blow dry it, and it's gonna come out with the hair being much more laid down than it was before. So by using that product and by the hair being so laid, I'm able to see where in the blend that I need work at. So I'm just gonna debulk using my two guard. I'm gonna do some more detail work. Like I said, detail work is everything. Um, this should be the longest step 
in your in your uh, fading process uh, uh, is detail work so make sure you get your detail work in and uh, really just kind of rest your eyes too. look at something else look in the mirror um, rest your eyes for a minute get back to it because that's how you're going to be able to really see the imperfections in your blend Listen, let me tell you why they call me 360. When they sit in my chair, I spin them in the full 360, and they come out looking like, Damn, son, where'd you find this? You, too, this is The Cut. And if you like it, make sure you give it a thumbs up. If you're new to my channel, please hit that subscribe button. Also, Hustle Dreams Production, that's my brother. He does all my beats. His YouTube channel will be linked in the description below. Also, if you want to know where you can find any tools that you've seen in this video, Links will be in the description below. Otherwise, you guys can follow me on Instagram and Snapchat. My Snapchat is Jeezy360 and my Instagram is 360Jeezy. But it's your boy 360Jeezy and I'm out of here.